human language. It didn't have to follow those human language rules. So I could put sounds together in Klingon that normally would not be in the same language. So, for example, in, in Klingon, there's the sound V. Mm -hmm. Okay. And usually in a language, if there's a V sound, there's also an F sound. Not in Klingon. Why? Because usually that's the way it works in human languages, and Klingon is not a human language. In Klingon, there's a, there's a uh, T sound, uh, and there's also a D in Klingon, but the D doesn't match the T. You make it with a, using, putting your tongue in a different place. That's unusual from a human language point of view. Therefore, that's a good thing to do in Klingon, and so on. There's a number of things like that. We're just violating the rules of human phonetics or, or, the, or the tendencies of human phonetics. I came up with the inventory of sounds for Klingon. There's no sound in Klingon that doesn't occur somewhere in some human language somewhere or other, but the collection of sounds is unique to Klingon, and it's weird from a, from a human language point of view. Well, in addition to the sounds, I have to worry about the grammar of the language. You can't just throw words together in somewhere or other. A, lang a language is more than just its dictionary. Right? If I gave you a dictionary of French and said, OK, go ahead and speak French, you wouldn't know what to do. And it's the same thing with Klingon. So it's not just a list of words. So I had to figure out what the grammar was going to be. Well, what does that mean? That means the basic word order. Are there going to be prefixes and suffixes? Are there going to be tenses and plurals and all that kind of thing? And I honestly, at this point, don't remember what I did first or how I decided what when. But I do remember some of the thinking that went into what, what I chose to do. So for example, the basic order of the words I had to figure out. Uh, the, sort of the three basic elements in a, in, a, in a sentence are the subject, the verb, and the object. The subject is who's doing the action, the verb is what is the action, and the object is who's receiving the action, assuming that that's appropriate to the sentence. It doesn't have to be there. So in English, this is the order. The subject, and then the verb, and, and then the object. Dogs bite people. Dogs are the, the things doing the action, bite is the action, people are the recipients of the action. In English, if you take those same words and put them in reverse order, people bite dogs, it means something totally different, even though the words are exactly the same. So part of the grammar of English is, is knowing where in the sentence does the subject fall and where does the object fall. Otherwise, you don't know who's doing what to whom most of the time. It's a little more complicated than that. Uh, anyway, if you look around at all the different languages, there's all kinds of different orders these things can fall in. It doesn't have to be the way English is. And in fact, in some languages, it can be any old thing because you mark who's doing it by little suffixes or something like that. But ignoring that for the time being, mathematically, for these three elements, there's six possible combinations. In other words, there's the subject, verb, object. It could be subject, object, verb. It could be verb, object, subject, verb, subject, object. Object, subject, verb, object, verb, subject. But mathematically, there's six of these things. And all of these things are represented in languages in the world somewhere or other. However, some of them are a lot more common than others. So if you take this weird notion that the most common are the most human and the least common are the least human, then for Klingon, I should pick the least common, not because of any other reason than it's found in the, uh, the fewest human languages. And the least common are these, the ones with the object first. And this one here is the one I chose for Klingon that's found in a few languages in the world, not very many, as the basic word order. Uh, but because it's so uncommon in the world, that made it a good candidate for the basic word order for Klingon, which is not of this world. I had to decide what to do about the pronouns and had to decide whether it's just going to be independent words, like in English, I, you, he, she, or there's going to be suffixes or prefixes or something like in some other languages, or both. And I decided on both. So there are independent pronouns in Klingon that mean I, you, and so forth. But also with every verb, there's a little prefix that tells you who the object is, who the subject is. Uh, and what I did is modeled after some languages actually uh, from the Himalayas and put those th notions together. So a single prefix could mean the subject if, by itself, or it could mean the subject and the object together. So for example, I do something to you. I'm sorry, I, I do something to him. I do something to her. The little prefix is vi, and then the verb comes after that. 